Anonymous. We have a task which we believe only you can accomplish. We are not the only rulers of Equestria's astral and spiritual plane. Other beings control other forces, just as I control the night. Another controls interactions of atoms, or the brewing of war. Yes, and one of those, specifically the Reaper, the great angel of death, has retired. He has named you as his heir. Something about your race, understanding death better than even he. You are anonymous, and evidently you're also the new angel of death of this world. It felt like yesterday that you were just the regular equestrian human, doing normal human things. That's because it was yesterday. It was yesterday when you were dragged into Celestia's throne room on a matter of great importance. It was yesterday when you were told that death was retiring, and you were named his heir. Why? Because evidently, humans were far more knowledgeable about the matter than ponies were. And to be honest, you didn't know whether to be flattered or insulted. Of course you turned down the offer. You were quite content with where you were in life. A steady job, nice and cozy home, a good set of friends. But as it turns out, it was a mandatory promotion. Equestrian needs death. And so, here you are. You suppose it's not so bad. Your life is pretty much unchanged for the most part. As it turns out, you do get paid, and you also have one neat perk. Something about being able to travel between the mortal and spiritual plane. So, let me get this straight. You're now... death? Guess so. You say as you take a sip of your lemonade. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. You haven't been smoking poison joke again, right? I thought you quit. For the record, I did quit. And yes, it does sound crazy, but I'm telling the truth, guys. I have no reason to lie. Lily giggles into a drink. <laughs> I still think it's the craziest thing I've ever heard. The three of you sit in relative silence together for a bit before Thunderlane speaks up. So, uh, how does that work? You go around killing ponies or something with a scythe? Don't think so. You say as you rest your head on <sighs> your hand. Celestia said I just transport them to the next realm, or something like that. To be honest, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. So the Angel of Death doesn't even know how to do his job. That's going to end well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up. You nudge him playfully. Just as you set down your glass, a sudden sensation fills your mind. It's hard to put into words, but you feel as if you're needed somewhere. Your friends seem to notice. Is everything alright? Yeah. Yeah, uh... I... I gotta go somewhere. I'll get you guys around, okay? Sure thing, Anon. Thunderlane says, confused as you leave, making an is he alright gesture to Lily, who only shrugs in response. Where you're headed, you have no idea. But right now, you're following your gut, and it's telling you to go... this way. As you're walking down the path, you see a large, modern-looking building rise over the horizon. It's the local Ponyville Hospital. Shit. It doesn't take you too long to reach the entrance. Various ponies are inside and out, going about their usual business. Discharged ponies are hugging their loved ones as they celebrate cheating death. You reach the entrance and pull up a hand to push the door open. However, instead of making contact with the door, you end up passing right through it, almost causing you to stumble. Whoa! What the fuck? Did that just happen? Looking around, you notice that no one seems to acknowledge your presence. Hello? They all ignore you, reading magazines or talking to each other. Your heart starts to race as it sinks in. Shit! Motherfucker! Ass! Tits! Cunt! Cock! Huh. Either everyone suddenly became deaf or blind, or you no longer exist. Are you dead? Well, not exactly, Anon. You're death. After you've accepted the fact that you've apparently ceased to be a material being, you continue into one of the hospital wings, no one stopping you as you enter a restricted area. You look around in amazement as you watch everyone around you. Nurses are gossiping, doctors are writing, all oblivious to the fact that you're among them. And I was like, oh my gosh! And he was like, no Patient way! Patient is suffering from and hematoma, like multiple cranial fractures, and internal bleeding. Expected TTL? 24 hours. 30. At this blood. stage, she might not recognize her loved ones. I suggest the best we can do is relocate to a place Jeez. where she'd be more comfortable. Listening to all this is making you depressed. It's no wonder why you didn't want to be a doctor. Eventually, you find yourself entering a room, once again passing through the door. 
A fragile looking old mare is alone in the room, looking out the window. A small assortment of get better soon cards arranged on her bedside. Is this the one you're supposed to show the exit to? You jump back, startled. You, you could see me? <laughs> of course I can see you. If you're trying to hide, you're not doing a very good job at it. I wasn't trying to hide, it's just that I, uh... So your passenger can see and hear you. That's interesting. I'm death. I'm here to... Take me away? If you put it that way, yes. Well, I knew my time was coming soon, anyhow. I, I thought you'd be scarier. I certainly hope not. <laughs> then again, this is my first day on the job. I don't know if I'm supposed to be scary. First day? <laughs> well, I'll be... You learn something new every day, even on your deathbed. So, Mr. Death. She turns and looks at you with her kind, aged eyes. How do I finally rest in peace? To be honest, you really don't know. Celestia didn't give you so much as a training manual. The least the former Death could have done was to give you a quick rundown of how you're supposed to do your job. At least act like you know what you're doing, death and on. Go with the flow. You reach her bedside and kneel beside her. Are you ready? I am. This frail old body isn't doing me any good. I've said my goodbyes to my loved ones. It's about time I said so to Equestria. Very well. You hesitantly say as you reach out a hand and gently grab a bony hoof. Just as you do so, you feel a weird sensation in your hand. Something is telling you to pull, and so you pull and the hoof follows. But this isn't the hoof that you grabbed earlier. It's the same one, but with a brighter, cleaner, younger coat. As you continue to pull, the rest of the body follows. A younger mare comes out of the old one, her eyes closed as you separate the spirit from the flesh. As soon as she's completely out, she opens her eyes and looks around in amazement. Well, I'll be. I'm in my prime again. And look, it's me! She gestures to her now dead self, its eyes peacefully closed. <laughs> I can move around now. No more old muscles and bones slow me down, no sir. She's jumping in the air in some sort of celebration, <laughs> laughing like Whoa! a little school filly. The scene threatens to make your huh? heart melt. What's that? You look to where she's pointing, and notice that a bright white hole has appeared on one of the walls. Light is shining through, and the both of you look at it in amazement. Is that... Heaven? The pony cautiously approaches it, her eyes wide as she gets closer to the exit. It's calling to me. I can feel it. You, on the other hand, feel no such thing. Perhaps it's not your time yet. Maybe you should go. What a stupid thing to say. <laughs> Maybe I should. She turns to you, a big smile on her face. Thank you, Death. No problem. You say out of habit, your mind racing too quickly to formulate a more proper response. And with that, she enters the door her form disappearing as she crosses into the next realm. Then, in a flash of light, the entrance to heaven vanishes, leaving you alone in the room. You stand there, your mouth agape for what feels like forever as your mind reboots itself. What the fuck? Eventually, you leave the hospital and head back towards your home, taking the route through the center of Ponyville. Various thoughts are swarming your mind, your body running on autopilot as you recollect recent events for the hundredth time. You did it. You actually killed someone. Well, technically it wasn't really murder. Or at least you don't think so. It definitely didn't feel like murder. Hell, the pony you killed even thanked you. Nothing makes sense anymore. Good afternoon, Anon. Hey. You respond before stopping in your tracks. Wait, you can see me? Pinky turns around and smiles. Of course, silly. <laughs> You're not a ghosty. Or at least, I don't think you are. See you later. She continues on her way, singing some song about when she was a little filly. That one's an oddball, all right. So you're back. You're not death right now. Just... anonymous. Well, you're still death, but... Stop thinking, brain. You're gonna hurt yourself. But despite all this confusion, one thing's for certain. Your life is probably going to become very, very interesting.
The End.